Okay, starting up with muscarinic antagonists. Again, uh, the class of drugs which we have already studied in the last semester, but still we'll be, be, be discussing this class function in treating asthma. So, muscarinic antagonists include ipratropium bromide and atropine. So, Muscarinic antagonists are competitive antagonists of acetylcholine, as you all know. So they inhibit ACH-mediated constriction of uh, bronchial airway. Anticholinergic also decrease vagal stimulated mucus secretion. So these agents are somewhat variable in their effectiveness as bronchodilators in asthma, but they are useful in patients who are refractory to or intolerant of sympathomimetics or methylxanthines. Uh, okay, 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 good, Jenem, good. No, Jenem, that's, okay, I understand now. Okay. All right, so, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so ibratropium, a quaternary amine that is poorly absorbed and does not cross the blood-brain barrier, is administered as an aerosol. It is low, uh, its low systemic, systemic absorption limits its adverse effects. So it is used in asthma and COPD. Then we have theotropium. So it is a long-acting muscarinic antagonist approved for the maintenance in COPD. So atropine is readily absorbed into the systemic circulation. The adverse effect of atropine, as you all know, is uh, drowsiness, sedation, dry mouth, xerostema, if you remember. Then we have blood vision. So these effects limit its use as an anti-asthmatic, okay? Then we have glucocorticoid. As the name suggests, gluco, it means that we are going to talk about something that is enhancing the glucose levels, right? So, uh, glucocorticoids include uh, baclomethasone, triamcinolone acetate, and then we have butsonide, and then we have uh, flu, uh, flunisolide, and Flutycosone propionate. So these are the first line agents for the treatment of persistent asthma. Glucocorticoids produce a significant increase in airway diameter. Why? Because again, it's doing the same thing, okay? Basically, glucocorticoids are released by the adrenal gland, okay? So from the cortex of the adrenal gland, all right? So glucocorticoids have this ability to uh, have anti-inflammatory effects, okay? So what is it doing is, uh, it is attenuating prostaglandin and leukotriene synthesis via axin A1A and by generally inhibiting the immune response, okay? Uh, including production of cytokines and chemoattractants. So it is doing two things, okay, all right? What is it doing is, it's producing anti-inflammatory action, plus it is also uh, discouraging uh, our WBCs, okay? From attacking, okay? No problem, Tuba, don't worry. Still, we have 23 students, okay? So don't worry at all. Before I take the key to show the class, it's okay, Tuba. Luckily, I saved it today. All right, the attendance. Don't worry. Okay? All right. So, I was talking that glucocorticoids, okay, they produce anti-inflammatory effects and also 
it is uh, discouraging the macrophages okay and uh, 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 overall the wbc's to you know attack okay so that is why they increase responsiveness to sympathomimetics and decrease the mucus production okay so glucocorticoids are available as oral topical and inhaled agent the use of inhaled glucocorticoids is recommended for the initial treatment of asthma with additional agents uh, added as needed. They are used prophylactically rather than to reverse an acute attack. The most common adverse effect of inhaled glucocorticoids are hoarseness and uh, oral candidiasis. The most serious adverse effect are adrenal suppression and osteoporosis uh, inshallah in the uh, up, uh, in the second upcoming semester you'll study about the glucocorticoids in lot more detail okay so inhaled glucocorticoids are partially absorbed because of their systemic adverse effects oral glucocorticoids are usually reversed for patients with severe persistent asthma uh, okay Wait a minute. So inhaled glucocorticoids are poorly effective in COPD. Then we'll talk about leukotriene inhibitors. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So we have uh, Zafirlucas and then we have Montelukas. So these are antagonists of the leukotriene receptor LT1. This blocks the action of the cis leukotrienes T4, D4, and E4. So the drugs reduce bronchoconstriction and inflammatory cell infiltration. Uh, most studies with this class of drug have been done with mild persistent asthma and they appear to be moderately effective. These drugs are recommended as an alternative to medium dose inhaled glucocorticoids in moderate and severe persistent asthma. Adverse effects of uh, Zafirlucas include headache and elevation in liver enzymes. Zafirlucas and Montelukas are administered orally one to two times per day. Okay, so Zafirlucas inhibits the metabolism of warfarin if you remember uh, we talked about it previously as well then we have xylitone so it inhibits 5 lipooxygenase the rate limiting enzyme and leukotriene biosynthesis it causes an immediate and sustained 15 percent improvement in forced expiratory volume in patients with mild persistent asthma this agent releases bronchoconstriction from exercise. It is administered orally, usually four times per day. It may cause liver toxicity. Hepatic enzymes should be monitored. Elderly women appear to be at higher, highest risk. It may cause flu-like symptoms, chills, fatigue, and fever. It inhibits microsomal P450 and thereby decreases the metabolism of terfenidine, warfarin, and theophylline. This is important. I can ask you an exam. Okay. Then is alpha proteinase inhibitor. So alpha-1 proteinase inhibitor is used to treat emphysema caused by a deficiency in alpha-1 proteinase, a peptide that inhibits elastase in Patients with the deficiency elastase destroys lung parenchyma. So this drug is administered by weekly IV injection to treat patients homozygous for this deficiency. Wait a minute, I've got a message. Uh, okay. I, I will talk about it, okay? Then, all right. You see, wait a minute. 
wait a minute, Zainab. Okay. Zainab, you talked here that what can we do if the liver enzymes are high, okay? So if the liver enzymes are high, all right, so, and you see it's the adverse effect, okay? So the first thing that you should do is to stop the medicine, all right? Because it's not a side effect, it is an adverse effect. So you actually have to monitor uh, that maybe you're taking more dose than required, all right? So obviously the effect will be managed, okay? All right. Then we have anti-immunoglobulin E. So, uh, okay. Uh, all right. So you have uh, omalizumab binds to human immunoglobulin antibodies, high affin affinity FC receptor, blocking binding of uh, antibodies to mast cell, basophil, and other cells associated with allergic response. It also lowers free serum IgE concentration uh, by as much as 90%. And since it does not block the allergen antibody reaction, leads to a reduction in allergen concentrations. So these activities reduce both the early phase degranulation reaction of mast cell and late phase release of mediators. Uh oh wait. All right. So it is approved for the treatment of asthma in patients over 12 years old who are refractory to inhaled glucocorticoids and those asthmatic patients with allergies. The drug is administered by subcutaneous injection every two to four weeks. Then we have uh, Ruflumilast. So it is a phosphodiesterase type 4 inhibitor, but may have additional mechanism of action during anti inflammatory activity. It is approved for use in COPD but not asthma. The most common adverse effects are nausea, weight loss, mental health problems, including suicidal thought and behavior. Then we have the last one, which is Comon. So <clears throat> we have scomolin sodium and nidochromyl sodium are mast cell stabilizers and inhaler were used as agents in the treatment of asthma. Uh, nidochromyl has been removed from the market. However, chromolin is available as a nasal spray. Thank you, everybody. That is it for today. Uh, wait.